This is Lester Till I Die TV. Watch and subscribe on YouTube and listen on your podcast platform. Oh, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Lester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes. It didn't happen in 49, 61, 63 or 69 when they reached the final. But the class of 2021 have delivered. Leicester City are FA Cup winners at last and are history makers at Wembley. They have blown their rivals away. They have blown us all away in truth. Premier League champions, 2016. The amazing... Leicester City! Your first choice for everything Leicester City. Tune in and join in now. Right, Chris. All right there. <laughs> Take two, as they say. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those days? <laughs> I am having one of those weeks, I'll tell you. Good evening. This is Leicester Till I Die. Uh, I'm Chris, and you can catch us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, and also, obviously, on YouTube on Leicester Till I Die TV. If you're watching on YouTube, then please, please, Give the, uh, give the video a like, share it if you can, and mainly subscribe to the channel. It all helps us grow. And if you listen on Spotify, and I do have the face for podcast, I know that. If you listen on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, any podcast platform, we're over with loads of them. Um, you can catch us there as well. Um, no match tonight. We're having a bit of a break, uh, which makes a change. Instead, we've got a very, very special one of these. On YouTube and your favourite podcast platform, this is Lester Till I Die TV. In conversation with... Strap yourself in, because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. Oh, set up, switched on and ready to go. I wasn't five minutes ago, I can tell you. Um, for those of us of a certain age, you will remember this guy. Uh, I started to follow Leicester City uh, in the famous Jimmy Bloomfield years, which were great, great years. The old Filbert Street, the yeah, the dirty toilets, the... <laughs> the metal bars that you got crushed on if if you scored. But we miss it all, don't we? I certainly miss this guy. We could do with him now on the wing, I'll tell you. Let's bring him, Mr. Winston White. Good evening or good morning, is it, over there? How the devil are you? Hi, Chris. Yeah, it's just turned noon. So, uh, yeah, great to see you, Chris. I'm trying to get you. Obviously, you're in, you're in sunny Florida there. I thought I'd try and get in the spirit here and sort of wear something nice and bright and summery, but I don't think I'm getting away with it quite, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to cut those sleeves off to actually let your body breathe a little bit because it is wet. You don't, breathing. You don't see what's under these sleeves, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a body made for clothes. Let me just oh, put it that way. Not, right, not to, okay. You know when you say <laughs> you're beach ready? I'm more like beach whale. I'm not going to lie. That's no, me. no, no worries. It's a body well lived. And this is ah, no, that's true. You, you've said a couple of good ones this, this evening, but I'm going to take that one as well. Body well lived. I like that. Um, we're, we're going to have trouble with this guy. I tell you this: uh, it's Dan, and he's a he's a friend. Well, I say a friend. You know, I'm, I'm contractually obliged to call him that. Uh, Dan from Turf Moor House TV, who does this version of uh, Burn for Burnley. And do get over Hi. there, guys, if you're watching and you've not checked him out. He does a lot of non-Burnley stuff. Uh, and make, make the most of him while we've still got him, because they might be going down, of course, at the end of the season. But we're going to be fighting over you, because he says you're a Burnley legend, and I say you're a Leicester legend. So we'll, we'll see how the day goes. We'll see how it goes. But Winston, yeah, I mean, you, um, like I said, I mentioned then, you, you know, you, you were sort of at Leicester at the, very, um, the Bloomfield years. You started your youth career at Leicester. How, how did that happen? 
Oh, yeah. did, did, how did you get into it? Yeah, so I um, I wasn't aware that Leicester City wanted me initially. I always uh, had a uh, a love for the club in terms of you know they were they were obviously in the first division at the time, which is now obviously Premier yeah. League now. And I uh, I just play football for my local teams and the county, Leicestershire County. And I knew I was a good player because I get, kept getting selected and I, I was scoring loads yeah. of goals. Um, so around 14, 15 years of age, um, a, a guy called Ray Shaw, who's one of the legendary scouts for Leicester City, he, um, I was told that he was actually watching me and he apparently had been watching a lot of county games. And uh, yeah. although I knew I was a good player, uh, growing up in the Caribbean culture, uh, my my father and you know other members of my family were into cricket, right. so yeah. I, I you know and I was a good cricketer and and, and good very good track athlete as well. Hundred meters, I broke the record for my school many times, and oh, that's right. stuff. so it really didn't cross my mind that I was actually good enough to play at the professional level because mm. you know I didn't I couldn't compare myself really to anybody because I didn't you know they didn't have the academies and so on. Anyway. Um, I, I got a knock on the door from um, one scout, and uh, he was actually from Peterborough United, a, a guy called Noel Cantwell. Do you remember him? I don't he was, know. He was no. a manager for, for, for Peterborough for years. Right. He knocked on my door and, and basically just said, we'd like to sign your son. And I was 15 years of age. And that started the uh, the ball rolling because after, you know, my brother said, look, we, we, we're going to wait and see because my brother was a semi-pro pro, pro player. Right. And he said, um, wait and see, Winston. Don't make any decisions yet. Anyway, he was absolutely right because Aston Villa came in, Wolves came in, Coventry came in, Leicester came in. It was a no-brainer wow. when Leicester came in. And um, I was so honoured and privileged to um, to sign uh, apprenticeships, as they were then. Uh, off the back of, like I said, playing for the county, we got to the semi-finals of the, of the, um, of the English cup as it was called i think it was called the english championship i think it was called then at youth level so you know i was in the profile yeah. a lot like i said i didn't have the, the the major aspirations as a lot of kids do now because they didn't seem to that be that pathway mm. anyway um you know when i was offered the opportunity i jumped at it uh, chris and uh my, my life hasn't really looked back because you know it's 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 been one um sort of thing after the other in the in the world of football but I hold so much pride in wearing uh, the blue shirt. I really do. So it was a no. I mean, you mentioned then how many different clubs were coming in for you, but mm -hmm. you said no brainer to join Leicester. Yes, it was. It absolutely was because when you look at the names, because bear in mind, you know, um, I mean, after us, you know, when I signed, uh, Peter, Peter Shilton had just gone. But, you right. know, when I was watching Leicester, Shilton, Graham Cross, Frank yes. Worthington, Keith Weller, oh. um, you know, um, uh, Stevie Earle, uh, mm. uh, uh, Alan Birchinall, uh, Steve Whitworth, Dennis oh. Roth. I mean, you You're know. You're going through my youth here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And mm. we, you know, it, as, a, as a team, you know, it, they, they were holding their own. You know, I, 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 mm. I, I think four internationals. When I signed for Leicester at the time, Whitworth, Weller, Worthington, and one more who escapes me now, but I think we had four internationals, and it was just a club that was going places under Jimmy Bloomfield. It was it was quite obvious that if they'd have kept, you know, some sort of continuity and and and, and the the staff that they had, that we would have, I think, gone on. You know, I mean, you you say there. I mean, they were great years, although we didn't actually win anything. Mm. And I remember a conversation that Alan Birchnell uh, relates on, on quite a few videos when, um, when Martin O'Neill came in. Everybody right. kept going into him, oh, the, um, the the Bloomfield years, the Bloomfield years. He said, but what right. did you actually bloody win? And it, it, we didn't. We didn't win anything, but it was, it was just a joy to watch. Well, it, 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 it was. We, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy wanted – he liked flair players, but he liked flair players that worked hard. And, mm. you know, the, the, the crazy thing about it is, you know, I look at a player like Frank Worthington and, and, and Frank used to sometimes get a bad press at times because, you know, he was too flat boy and, and, and had, you know, all these tricks and everything else. But you look at the longevity of a player like Frank Worthington. I mean, it, it, it's a joy to behold to have played alongside him and, mm. and, and watched him train. He was one of the hardest working players that I've, I'd ever seen. 
And you know, if he, you know, if he was playing now, um, you know, he he would he'd be a he'd be seen as a genius. Yes, you know, yes. and 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 that's the thing. Jimmy liked ball players who worked extremely hard, and that's what he had. He had a great nucleus of hard workers, and he had a great nucleus of of, of, of ball players as well. And I did fit into that category, and that's mm. why I really, uh, you know, value the fact that he saw that in me. I mean, rest in peace, Frank. He obviously passed not so long ago. But, right. You know, I mean, he nearly, very, very nearly signed at, um, for Liverpool, Bill Shankly at Liverpool. And I think it was his lifestyle and flamboyancy that actually, and I know it, it, there was a medical question as well, but that put Liverpool off. But that was to, 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 our, to our gain. And I think to these days, you know, it's, had he been playing for Liverpool, Frank, I think he'd have probably got recognised more at international level. Oh, there's no doubt. There's absolutely yeah. no doubt at all. Um, watching Frank at day on day and, and all the other players of my, you know, sort of generation will tell you that, you know, you just looked on in awe at Frank, you know, the, the fact that he just seemed to be, and he wasn't gifted with, with explosive pace like a Gary Lineker or, a, mm. you know, those sort of players. But he had exceptional touch and feel of the game. And good space awareness, you know. Yes. And they're the things that, even though he didn't play in my position, I used to watch players like that because they had great, you know, field intelligence. And um, mm -hmm. and he, yeah, he was definitely a, a, a very, very uh, great influence in my career. And and I mean, I think these days he he might struggle in the fact of. Like you said, he was flamboyant, but with social media as it is at the moment, <laughs> you can't get away with anything, can you? <laughs> well, it's a different world, you know. It's a, it's a different world, and you know, I, I you know, the, the stakes are higher now. There's a lot of different factors that make it, you know, near on impossible to have a what would be called a, a normal social life, as it were. Yeah. So you know, I, I have no doubt that Frank would have adjusted accordingly. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you made it into the first team at Leicester. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you, you said some names and I've just written them, excuse me, a few down here. We've got Mark Wallington, Larry May. Wallen. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Dennis Rofe, Andy Pete, Bobby Smith, Gary Lineker. I mean, there were, like I say, to me, I say, because that's, that's when I started watching uh, Leicester, that, that it's such memories for me. Right. And you said your first game, I think you said you came on as a substitute. Was your full home debut, was that against Stoke? Well, yeah, actually, my home, my full debut was against Stoke City away, where oh, I actually right. started the game. Uh, Keith got injured midweek, and uh, I didn't know. I was not aware that I was going to be playing. Uh, Jimmy came in, to, uh, came in to see me in the dressing room and just pulled me to the side and saying, you're playing tomorrow. And that was it. Um, and didn't really say anything else. Yeah. So I had the whole night to think about it. I had the the whole night to panic and worry about it because you know I know I've been doing well in 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 the uh, in the reserves and everything else mm. as a number of players have been doing. But yeah. you know I, I I certainly wasn't ready to take over Keith, the, you know the great Keith Weller, and um, but you know I did actually it's in some ways imitate his style because he was a true winger, Keith. You know, oh, and that's where really cool. that's, that's where I specialize. So I mean. Yeah. When he told me I was playing, you know, I had to be, you know, be a little bit, uh, uh, well, in control of my emotions. Let's put it that way. I was going to say, I was going to say how, you know, what was, what was, I mean, would, your mind must have just exploded. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan and, you know, I can just think if I was in that position, I'd right. be climbing off the walls. You know, it, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the great thing about it is I'm from a great family, you know, all in, live in Leicester. And, you know, when I went home and told my mum that I was playing, uh, for the first team, she just went, "Oh, that's nice," <laughs> you know. And 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 you know, it, it kind Typical of typical mom, it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it kind of put it in perspective, you know. That, yeah. um, you know, I was still Winston going home, you know, back yeah. to you know, back to my 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 home in in Evington, Leicester, and you know, it 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 was a good thing that she didn't kind of jump up and down and 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 so on. I mean, obviously, my brother, who, as I said, played semi pro. He were, I mean, you know, he was absolutely elated, you know. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a really great feeling, and um, and I, you know, and I, I did uh, play well in the game as well, which is a great yeah. bonus. Did you say Evington then? Uh, yeah, Evington. That was my you know. second home in in Leicester. Yeah, Evington, oh. on East Park Road. 
I was well, he's part road. I was born and brought up in uh, Evington. Right. Um, right. On, on, you probably haven't don't know but it was Alcester Road. It was, was near Yeah, I know Alcester Road. Yes, yeah, Alcester Road. And then yeah. we moved to Davenport Road. Yeah, I know um, Davenport as well. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I know I know those roads. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all our yesterdays here, it, isn't it? It is, you know? it is, yeah. yeah. Um, there is a change right now, you know. Change yeah, and, and that pub, was it the, yeah, the Dove pub at the bottom of Wellfield Drive? I have no ideas. I didn't have my first <laughs> drink until I was 30 years of age, so I have no oh. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe maybe I shouldn't admit this, but it was a, it was a very nice pub to nip into when uh, when you got out of school and changed uh, you know, threw your blazer and tie away and uh, try and get away with it, which we did a couple of times. But I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when you were there, obviously, um, you, you know, you came Frank. You saw Frank with uh, sorry Jimmy Bloomfield come and go. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think from every, I think Leicester fans, it was, it was a, very much a case of be careful what you wish for because right. they were starting to moan, weren't they? I think possibly on the fact that we hadn't won anything, and of course, we then got Frank McClintock in. Yeah, and I mean that. What was that like at the club? Because it all went wrong, didn't it, under Frank? It did. You know, I've said this on many, many times. It's been recorded many times that the uh, the situation where when Jimmy left. It wasn't just about the, Jimmy as a manager and a coach leaving. What what he what what happened was the DNA was lost of the club as well. We finished. I think it was the highest placed position we'd ever finished in the in the first division, which is now mm. the Premier League. And they sat the manager. What were they thinking at the time? So yeah. when Jimmy left, you know, the, the, he, it was he was he was the heart and soul of the of the club in terms of the organization. There was not a thing that Jimmy Bloomfield didn't know about mm. the club from the youth team all the way through to the first team. He used to watch all pretty much every game he could that was possible. And so, you know, when Frank came in, um, you know, coaches have their own style. They have their own sort of. Uh, philosophies on the game if you will and he tried to change too much too quickly we had a great nucleus yeah. some of the guys you mentioned there we had a really great nucleus of a youth team your larry mays your neville hamilton's your tommy williams we had a terrific yeah. bunch of players and you know he he brought in his his, his crew now granted he brought in some you know very good players and mm. you know your eddie kelly's i mean you yeah know, good guys you know, but um, overall, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the Leicester City way. There wasn't that flamboyant nature that we, you know, that, that a lot of the fans bought into initially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that be, be careful what you wish for thing has never been a true thing mm. because um, we, you know, it, it, the, a lot of a lot of the spirit of the club was lost when Jimmy left, and I felt sorry for Frank. But it was too much too soon for him. Yeah, because it was his first job, wasn't it? You know, right, right, yeah. you know. Right. And we've, we've seen these days. You know, I mean, you know, Wayne Rooney's not done bad, but Frank Lampard struggled. It, it's you know, you right. have to sort of get that experience. I think to be thrown in at the and to follow somebody like Jimmy Bloomfield and right. what he had. I can remember was it the Luton FA Cup game and the paper said it was like watching Brazil. You right. know, to, to follow that, to follow yeah. that, it. it you were saying you were the, the man that follows the man that follows sort of thing. Absolutely, but, you know, and, yeah. and you know, without going on too much about it, I, I, you know, I feel and I believe that um, when you, it's, 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 it's different now slightly because as a coach or manager, you come into a club, and a lot of the things that Jimmy had and of that generation and before they, they used to run the whole of the club. Now the coaches come in and they really just take care pretty much to the first team affairs pretty much yeah you know so they actually have less to worry about but on the other side of it if you take i mean i mean so alex, alex was obviously in the 80s at manchester united but apparently he took responsibility for everything to do with the club and that's what happens when uh and sean dyche at burnley mm. you know took the you know he, 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 you could see that was that was his club yeah. He knew everything that was going on. And, you know, a lot. There's, it's, it's kind of a lost art now. And I think mm. that when you get that continuity and you get that DNA, which takes time, mm. I think that's when you get success. Yes. 
Yes. And unfortunately, managers don't always get that these days. No. Uh, hi, Talk. Hi, Scott. You, you've come into the conversation along with Dan and a few others. There's some questions coming in. So we'll, we'll save the questions from the, from the, uh, the, from the viewers until t- 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 the end. Sure. Um, Frank went and then Jock came in. And that right. <laughs> must have been like, <laughs> that must have been like, you know, um, Devil and Deep Blue Sea, really. <laughs> I mean, there's two completely different characters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I, I like Jock. He was a charismatic, uh, incredibly uh, flamboyant in 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 his own way. You know, I mean, he you know had this booming voice that you could hear from a mile away, and uh, <laughs> very very imposed himself. So yeah, you're right. It was a complete contrast to Frank. Um, and um, but you know, by that time, you know, it didn't help my career. I've got to say because by that time, I was at the club what four years by at that point nearly five actually and yeah i needed i needed uh games i needed matches mm. and i was desperate i needed to get games on my uh, body clock you know and um i just had to uh get a move i i, I yeah. really needed to and so you know i i had almost pretty much made my mind up uh without saying anything um at the end of that season when we got relegated i just knew that i needed a fresh start because there was a lot of pain when we got relegated that season, even though I did play, you know, a few game, a couple of games in that season, yeah. scored against Liverpool, as you as you know. I was going to say, I, I think you've, you've said that uh, that was your first goal, wasn't it? For, that was my first goal. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so, you know, it was a great feeling. And, you know, a lot of players may have said, well, you know, I'll give it a fresh start. But I knew. I, I knew that I needed, I knew I was getting a little bit stale because, mm. you know, and, and a number of players felt the same way, needed a fresh start. And and so it was a bit of an exodus when, when Jock came in and, uh, you know, I was, I knew I had to leave and, um, you know, but I had respect for Jock and, and I, yeah. I played under him, obviously, you know, uh, not many times, but, you know, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was great knowing him and, uh, and yeah. It was, uh, it was it was a it was a thing that Leicester needed. Let's put it that yeah. way. Oh, I yeah. think at the time definitely. Yeah. And for you, it's what you needed. And players, yeah. you know, you have to decide. I mean, these days it's a completely different game. There's a lot more money floating about, and, right. and some players. Let's face it, we know some players are happy to warm the bench and get the money at the end. But yeah. if you are, if you do want to play, and like you said, you know, you, you've got to go. Sometimes it's just it's, it's football. You have to look away and see. What opportunities that there are elsewhere? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, 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 I've never understood that. I've never understood why a player can feel relatively comfortable being on the bench for more than, let's say, five games. I know, you know, I've not been on the bench many times in my career, but when I have been on the bench, I've been exceptionally miserable, and okay. I've never understood why players actually want to kind of be a bit part player and uh that's something that i could never ever have done myself and i know a number of players that feel that way um but you know the uh the rewards are so high nowadays that maybe the incentives mm. lost a little bit i'm not challenging players and saying that's the case with them but no 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 it seems like a lot easier for them to accept than back in my day that's for sure you got to move to hereford i did um was there a lot of offers on the table or, or there was something what what attracted you to Hereford? What attracted me was the same things that attracted me uh going to Leicester, although they were in a you know a lower division. Uh you know, I, I really didn't I really didn't look at it that way. Mike Bailey, very, very, very uh good player uh for what for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And uh, Bobby Gould was his was his assistant manager. Were right. at Hereford, Hereford and mm. they were bringing in young players like me. I was still young at the time, and they were building a nucleus of a team. They brought in players from Aston Villa, Coventry City, um, who were again still in the first division. So it was geared towards success. Um, and again, you know, you 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 join these teams for the right reasons. They're going to play a style of football. They'd watch me on a numerous amount of occasions. And uh, in fact, I actually spoke to Jock, to, you know, because obviously they, had, they approached Leicester first. Yes. And I said to Jock, look, you know, um, I, I think I need to make a move because I need games. He said, Winston, you definitely need games. I can't guarantee you games here. You definitely need games. And I said, look, you know, I want to go. 
the loan options weren't available at the time. I think no. if I'd have had my time again, I think I'd have gone on loan. I wouldn't have made mm -hmm. that jump from what it was, obviously the the, the second division at the time yeah. to two leagues down. I don't. I wouldn't have done that, and, and that's not being disrespectful to Hereford, but I was a better player than that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you know, but I needed games, and um, I've got to tell you, I didn't realize how far Hereford was as well, because technically <laughs> speaking, it was actually I think still the Midlands at the time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a long way away from Leicester. It is, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But, you, you, I mean, like you say, maybe uh, if you had your time again, you might have chosen somewhere else. But you you had a long and fruitful career there, 175-odd games. I did, I did. I, I achieved my goal and objectives of getting league games under my belt. And, you know, there were some good times at Hereford, Um but Mike Bailey left after six, seven months, probably less than that, actually. And uh, again, it changed. I think we had, I think we had four managers there in my time. So again, that lack of continuity, um, I was a victim of. Mm. Um, and I don't want to keep using that word victim, but, you know, I think players suffer far more than um, the public realises when a manager leaves, especially the manager that signs them. Yes. Because that, you know, the game is all about belief. And all yeah. about providing your players with that belief that you can go out and play. And this is what we say, you know, when, when you bring in a new manager, you yeah. almost, if you've had a bad couple of years, you're kind of writing those years off and starting again because, you know, you, you, he'll come in and he might not like one or two players and he might have right. a completely different style. Um, right. you know, when you're changing managers as quickly as Watford do, right. <laughs> you don't seem to get that continuity. But uh, right. like you say, 175 odd games there. Um, and then from there, yeah. <laughs> according to Wikipedia, and I do say that the, I say Wikipedia to cover myself because you know right. it's never, not always true. You end up in Hong Kong. I did. Okay, so I can I can share this very openly. I still had another couple of years left at Hereford, uh, but right. I was desperate to get away because you know my game was being affected. I wasn't, you know, anybody see me play will know that. Yeah, and I was a ball player. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't conducive to my sort of game and the pitches were awful and, you know, Hereford just didn't have any money to bring in better players. Yeah. So I had to have formulate an exit strategy. Uh, they brought in a guy called John Newman who uh, had been at Derby um, and so on. Anyway, decent enough coach. But, I, you know, that was my... Um, that was my excuse to say, look, you know, I've had this opportunity. I don't think that I, you know, I, I can, I can play here anymore. And, um, he, he wished me all the best. And mm -hmm. I got a move off the back of, uh, a guy called Derek Spence and Northern Ireland international, who I was friends with. He, he invited me over. So I signed a six month contract to go out and play mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. And, um, I had some personal tragedy as well, which, which, mm -hmm. um, kind of helped me make the decision yeah. where I lost my mum very early in life. So, um, you know, that sort of, sort of the, the apron spring, yeah, strings, if you like, I wasn't attached to them as much. So I needed a change. I just mentally, I just needed a change. So I went out to Hong Kong and, and let me tell you, Chris, it changed my life in so many different ways. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Absolutely oh. loved it. My, my, my brother-in-law is Hong Kong Chinese and right. he, he and his, his family, they're back here now, but they, uh, they went back to Hong Kong for a couple of years for, for a job that he had. And right. they, obviously we, we invited us over and we went and we stayed with them. And it is, and I worked, I worked in the travel business at the time and I just thought of Hong Kong as all these big tall buildings and skyscraper, but what a lovely place Hong Kong is. Yeah. And I, I really wish I'd, I'd taken up the opportunity to go back, which I didn't, but uh, like you say, it is a lovely place. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I, in terms of the football, you know, uh, kind of it was limited then. I mean, we, you know, we're talking, yeah. we're talking, we're um, talking, you know, early 80s. It was very limited in terms of it was an immature market, but, you know, they paid very, very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they had some, they, they attracted some very good players because they were paying very well. I mean, Bestie, yeah. George Best was over there when I was playing. Wow. wow. Yeah, you know, so that says it all, played against Bestie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, stadiums are very, very good. So they threw a lot of money at it. And, um, but one of the things that I, you know, I actually, I think I grew into a man really there because I, I, I went out on my own and 
I had to learn a whole or understand a whole new culture. Mm. So it really was an incredible cultural and educational journey that I needed. Mm. And, um, you know, I, 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 it, it sort of shifted me into a different way of thinking about the world. Um, and yeah, uh, so, yeah, so I enjoyed my time there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a little bit, little bit of money in my pocket as well, which always helps. Cool. And um, I, I, I came back, um, you know, I think a better person. Yeah. Now, I, well, we said this recently. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, foreign players playing in the Premier League now. And right. some of them, you're not given the time now, are you? Because, you, like you say, you go to a different country and right. it's not just football it's the whole culture of where you're right. going to that you've got right. to buy into and got to get used to and right. that can take time can't it you know you know we looked at leicester and for farna it was took it to it like a duck to water but right. you know, other players samari and daka they take a little bit longer to sort of settle in and get used to it absolutely when you and when you know when you got a fat you know, you factor in if you've got to have a family for instance you know mm -hmm. you know the, all those different placements you know it they, yeah. are, they can be challenging because uh, and, and yes, you know, obviously you don't talk about that sort of stuff to the general public as such. But mm. I think sometimes the, the public have to have a little bit of tolerance and understanding that especially if it's a, a cultural change, you know, it does take time. It does. Oh, mm. definitely. Mm. You came back and eventually ended up at Berry. Now, I worked at Berry um, for, for a few years and I... <laughs> There was great rivalry in football, obviously between between clubs. Yeah. And for example, you know Leicester with Derby. You know, yeah, we find it. Well, I find it as, as a fan funny that they've gone down to the third division because of course we've been there as Leicester. But yeah. what I wouldn't want, even though it was Derby, I do not want the clubs to go after business because they are the heart and soul of the community. And the fact, you know, Absolutely. Leicester nearly went that way twice ourselves. So, you know, yeah, up and down that that part and parcel of the game, but going out of business. And I still look at that and forget because I did. I only went a couple of times when I was there, but because uh, I didn't live there, so it was just a case of sort of the odd night game. But yeah. you know, it there was them and Bolton at the same time, and sort of Bolton survived. And I see Bering. I'm thinking, I know they've come back now, and I think they've got promoted in 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 the league that they're in, which is about the eighth or ninth tier. Yeah. But it it you, when you lose that, when you lose yeah. that, it, it's I don't know. I, I just feel sorry. What were your memories of Berry? Because again, again, you were there for like 125 games. Yeah, great, great affection at Berry. Um, like I said, you know, I came back a different person. Um, I. When I came back, you you know, I, I realized that you've forgotten very quickly in football. So I, I went from this promising young player playing at, a, you know, a level that's, you know, that I should have been playing at a higher level at and people looking at me, leaving and then coming back and really having to go on trial to a number of different teams. I, anyway, I ended up at Bury after being, I think I was at Stockport for a month. I was at mm. uh, Chesterfield for a month. So that's why my CV, it looks a little bit... Uh, a little bit uh, yeah. top heavy, if you will, but yeah. so but I'd only been at these clubs for a month on sort of uh, you know a, a monthly contract or, or non contract as it as it was called then. Mm. So um, that's what really kind of looked as if I was a journeyman. But when I went to Bury, I'd played against against Bury on a number of occasions actually when I was at Hereford, and it was one of those really old fashioned grounds where you were really close to the fans. So I I, I always reacted to the fans' noise. Um, yeah, you know, and 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 that, that almost that tactile feel of the fans near to you. You pick up the ball from a throwing, and you'd hear you'd hear every single comment. You know, good, bad, mm. or indifferent. Yes, but I always reacted to that because it gave me that energy. You felt as if you were more than just the game. There was a lot of mm. other dynamics going on. And uh, as I say, I had some really good games at Bury, and it, yes. it always seemed to be at night games as well. Um, anyway, so when they came in for me, I, mm. I you know, I, I went and I, I was there for, a, I think, a month. And then the fans started to, you know, sort of shout, sign sign him up, sign him up, because I, yeah. I was really fit by that point. And, uh, and you know, playing really well as a winger. And they had some very good players. So anyway, the bottom line of it is that I signed um, mm. for them. And um, I, I remember the club with incredible affection. And I'm still friends with a lot of my former players to this day. Right. And, and, and the assistant manager, a guy called Frank Casper. 
um, who he was at Burnley as well, wasn't he? If he I was remember, at Burnley, sure. yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I became sort of that Burnley kind of Berry connection, if yes. you will, because there's been a number of players that play for both teams. Yeah. Yes. You, you said then, and I, and I don't know what it is, but at whatever level you're at. There's something about a night game. It's just a different feel. And oh. I don't necessarily mean a night game in um, in sort of, you know, May or something when it's light, but in the winter when you've got the floodlights on. and oh, it's it's the the, There's the hairs on the back of your neck go up, doesn't it? It's, it's the best. I, I, mm. Listen, I, I'm getting chills even thinking about it now that, you know, those night games were always the games where I, I did shine. You know, I, I, yeah. I loved playing night games. The ball moved quicker generally because you know there was a little bit of moisture on the on the yeah. pitch, um, the floodlights, the whole thing. You know, you, yeah. and and what was great about it, although it sat in afternoons with, with great nights, oh, great days. Sorry, the yeah. night games. This the people seem to be more vocal. I guess. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. I think uh, maybe yeah. things were exacerbated because it was, yeah. you know, the still of the night air or whatever. But it, it, everything seems to be a little bit more um, up tempo, if you will. You know, mm. and uh, I, so I used to love night games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love going to night. There's something about a night game, like I say. Mm. And and what you were saying then about you know um, the feel at the you know the lower league type clubs. I mean, I I lived down in Poole, and when I came down here, Bournemouth was like the nearest major town although at that point they were sort of in in the fourth tier but yeah. i couldn't go i couldn't go and watch bournemouth because right. of, you know i mean leicester's like a seven and a half eight hour return trip for me but i couldn't go to bournemouth because to me it was like having an affair you know right. <laughs> I'd have to do okay. the old, old allegedly keith weller with the white tights routine right um, so i went to paul uh paul town which are like they're, they're in the southern whatever it is about the 10th or 11th tier right and you, you know you, you you stood behind the goal and then you start talking to the guy next to you next to you and he's the chairman he's the owner right. of the club and right it's just it's such uh and this is why i, I do get annoyed like i say when you know the, the there's so much emphasis now on the big clubs and yeah. you know with berry you've got manchester two big manchester clubs right far away right and, Kids are brought up these days. I, I, all my four kids were born in um, in Burnley. And right. I said to my oldest, and he's a big Leicester fan, so I've obviously brought him up right. I said to him when he was born, I said, look, I said, I'd tried to take him to a few Burnley games. I said, you can support Burnley if you want, because that's where you were born, and that's your town, and all your friends at school will possibly be Burnley. Yeah. I said, you can support Leicester, because that's the team I support, and your dad supports, etc. But there's no way... That you are staying in this house if you support Liverpool, Man United, Chelsea, <laughs> or any, any of the big teams. And as I say, he, he chose well. He chose well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you were there like only four years at Berry. How did that come to an end? Yeah. So um, again, I got injured. I had my first major injury, um, mm -hmm. and um, I, uh, I I couldn't get back in the team because we we got promotion at Berry. And uh, yeah. it was a really good season that I had with Barry. Uh, Martin Dobson was a coach, the manager, should I say, Frank Casper, assistant manager. I'll say that's another Burnley name, isn't it? Correct. Isn't it? Yeah. No, correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we got promotion. I got injured uh, halfway through the season. Um, David Lee came in, good little player, and uh, and did incredibly well. And um, and I couldn't get back in. I was, you know, I was on the bench and so on. And like I mentioned yeah. at the beginning. I, I just didn't like being on the bench and I didn't feel that I was an impact player. I felt that mm. I was a, uh, a 90 minute player. I had the, I had definitely had the uh, engine for it to be a 90 minute player. So I said, I wanted to go out on loan and I did, I went out on loan yeah. and uh, it was quite obvious that at that point that, you know, um, I think my time w w was, was up. Um, you know, David was doing well and I, we're yeah. still friends to this day, David and I, David Lee is a great lad. No. Um, so, you know, again, it happens in football, you know, it, it, you, you just, um, have to just move on. So, yeah. um, so I did. And, um, and again, personal situation, you know, I, um, I, I needed to, um, to get down to the South of England again. Um, you know, and, and so I, I, I moved to Colchester United for a season. Yeah. And so you played, you played a fair few games there. Um, and then the former, and, and I know, I know Dan's gone. So <laughs> the Burnley, Dan, Dan, the Burnley fan, they've right. got, a, they've got a bit of an important game tonight against. Right, they do, so, they do indeed. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't we couldn't quite do you that much of a favor last night dan but you know at least they, at least we didn't let everton win um yeah. But yeah, you ended up at Burnley. I mean, I, I lived at Burnley, say, for 25 odd years, and all my children were born there. Great town, really, really nice people. Uh, right. And you, you, again, you, you were over 100 games at Burnley. Yeah, you know, you know, again, you know, Dan said about, you know, Burnley legend and uh, yeah. every, every club, you know, where I've signed a long term contract, I've pretty much seen out most of my contracts. And so mm. every club I've played for uh, on a, on a, full contract basis i've i have great affection for let's just make that clear yes but yes. at burnley i i excelled um in as much as i knew a number of the different players i was playing with because i played with mm -hmm. a few of them at, at um at berry yeah people like joe jacob uh people like um um oh gosh terry pashley for instance, you know, uh, Andy Farrell, who was at Burnley, but oh, wow, I actually yeah. knew him from Colchester United days. Wow. <laughs> so when you are familiar with the dressing room and you get into mm. the dressing room, you can integrate a lot quicker. Yes. And I felt very much at home when I went to Burnley. The fans really took to me because a few games early I played against Burnley and I had a really good game so um you know it was it was very easy to integrate and and so the the, the dressing room accept accepted me very very quickly and they were off the back of obviously uh nearly going out the football league the the, the, the year yeah, yeah. before mm. so everybody there was a very upbeat and optimistic uh feel about the place because you know they 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 <laughs> save themselves from the brink of disaster so a lot of things that were, were very upbeat about the club and i think i came in and i think i did well i think i did well um particularly the last season i was there um I, but what i love about the place was that they eat breathe and sleep the game and yeah i was um, going to say I, you're born into burnley aren't you I'm, when I'm, you're born I'm, it's in yeah. your DNA. Yeah. absolutely every yeah. person you speak to has a commitment to that club yeah. And I used to love that. And I miss that because when I was younger at Leicester, it seemed that every every person I knew in you know Leicester supported Leicester City. So yeah, that connection, not just with the your teammates, but with the fans as well. I embraced that and I loved it. And I was by that time I was a I was a seasoned player with like I don't know 400 league games, yeah. you know, on my belt. So I, I knew what was what. And I, I think I really um embrace the community as well as the team you know and i i really enjoyed my time there i really did yeah i mean whenever i speak to dan and we speak we do a lot of shows together and i speak to him a lot and i told him that i was i was able to get you on and um it was just unfortunate like i said it clashes with the game uh but he he he, he spoke very very highly of you yeah that's that's, yeah. that's good to know I, I you know again i i still stay in contact with a lot of um of of, of fans from Burnley mm -hmm. and uh, yep. teammates and um you know at, at some point you, you know it doesn't matter where they are whether in the, the the premier or or god forbid the championship when I you know next time I'm in in the UK I'm definitely going to go and see them um, yes. because I've got, still yeah. got have a lot of friends there yeah it is it is long I mean before we come on to the the questions in the chat one last question you're obviously based in Florida now yes you lucky um, and so and so. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, that's, you know, I don't know sort of whereabouts in Florida, but quickly David Beckham's opening, uh, or not opening, but setting up um, Miami. Well, yeah, Miami. He's, yeah, yeah, he's got a franchise into yeah. Miami. They've been going a couple of seasons now. In fact, I was there at the ground. Uh, well, I'm not, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice facilities. It's a temporary facility they have there, but it's nice. I'm just across the way. I'm on the Gulf of Mexico where it's beautiful. All oh, right. Oh, you've frozen, Winston. Um, I think... I think we may have lost Winston. Let's hope when we're in the Gulf of Mexico, it's not a hurricane or a typhoon. Um... We'll yep. just see. Yeah. Are we I back? Ah. A second. Yeah. No, that's okay. No, you, you froze. I just said, I hope it wasn't a hurricane or anything. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, there's not, there's nothing blowing at the moment apart from my, uh, uh, my, uh, my, my enthusiasm. Yeah. 
I'm going to say, let's be careful, be careful what yeah, you I say there. I'm trying to think of something uh, clean to say there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah. I'd, he'd have to worry about that on this show, I'll tell you. I'm surprised it's not got banned yet. But yeah. um, do, you get, do you get to see much um, uh, sort of American uh, uh, soccer, obviously, as they call it? Or you're saying about the BBC, do you still watch the Premier League a lot? Oh, or? Let me tell you, Chris, the coverage here, you know, and it's all cable TV, pretty much most of it. Um, the coverage mm. here is outstanding. Every, pretty much every single Premier League game is televised because mm. they've got the luxury of different channels. So yeah. I subscribe to all of them and I watch pretty much every single game. I have a football widow for a wife. <laughs> um, a... Yeah, you know, because I go missing. I go missing yeah. on a Saturday and Sunday. And with the way the games are staggered now, you know, yeah. it, it, you just you just go from one to another and... Um, but it's exceptional. They have a lot of uh, English pundits here. Uh, people like Robbie Earl are doing a lot of stuff on uh, yeah. here. And one of my old teammates from uh, Berry, Lee Dixon, uh, he does a lot right. of stuff yeah. now with American TV. As does um, Graham Lasso, who is um, obviously a, a ex um, uh, Blackburn enemy yeah. of Blackburn Burnley. You saved. Oh, Dan's yeah. gone. You saved to mention Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but they they are you know there are a number of pundits now, so they're, they're starting to understand the game somewhat. But mm. you know, uh, American uh, U U.S. soccer is nowhere near to the level that it should be, based on <clears throat> the facilities they have yeah. here. They, they have some outstanding stadiums. Um, we've, you know, we've got even them in the world high school, of course. Level. Yeah, 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 even just at high school level, they have some outstanding yeah. stadiums. We have a stadium here in Naples, where I live in Florida, and. Um, we just built a, a complex here. I was I was involved in the consult consultation side of it regarding the soccer, and it's mm -hmm. as good as and many of the the you know the the, the sort of the yeah. division grounds that I played at. Yeah. Exceptional, whole three three and a half thousands. You yeah. know, just you know, seat to stadium, and it's community. It's a community facility. It's crazy. Yeah. I yeah. love it. You know, you, I don't know if it still is, but you know, years ago, because of course we were owned at one point by Milan Mandrich, who owned an American. Right, Birch yeah. and Alan Birchnell played. This was this was sort of in the in the latter version of American soccer. Yeah, um, and Alan Birchnell played over there. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it's we'll find out how good America is because, like I said, we've got them in the World Cup group. So indeed, that would be very interesting. In, yeah. Indeed, I, I, yeah. I can predict very quickly. You know that you know incredible fitness levels here. Mm. Because you know everything is data, data, data. So you, you, England are going to come up against an, an exceptionally fit team, and England mm -hmm. obviously prides itself on its level of fitness. But when it comes down to it, it's going to be all about skill on the ball and ability yeah. on the ball. Yeah. Um, and I think that will be that will determine who gets out of the group. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. And yeah. um, you know, so I have no doubt that it will be England that gets out of the group, but. Uh, the US will come with a with a very very well prepared team. Okay. It'd be nice. It'd be nice for them to go through. You know, it really would. But uh, oh yeah, yeah. We're we'll, we'll going to some questions now. Sure. Uh, Spencer Spencer just said here, what was it like playing with Keith Weller before his time? Cheers, Spencer. <laughs> Meant to be one of the very best. Yeah, Keith. I learned so much from Keith. Um, God bless me. Passed away a few years ago, but yes. before. You know, when when I left Leicester and I came back, we came back to a, at the farewell to Filbert Street uh, event, and I played in that game, and it was amazing. And I saw Can Keith. You say that. Yeah, right there you go. <laughs> yes, I yeah. was there. I was part of that, yeah. and uh, so I, I was so proud to, you know, we were having a couple of drinks afterwards, and I said to Keith, you know, I hope you realise how much you meant to me, Keith, because. You know, I've, I've travelled, I've seen a lot of players, and I, he was one of their very best. There's yes. no two ways about it. And unfortunately, you know, there was a lot of good players in that era. So I think he had four caps, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but Again, he yeah, possibly more. would have had more had he been at a bigger, yeah. note, bigger profile club. Yeah, so, so playing with him and watching him training and so on, the consummate professional and... Um, mm -hmm. Again, sadly, he left. When Jimmy left, he left. Yes. Yeah. You know? I think I think that was the I could say going back to the be careful what you wish for. There right. were so many players when Jimmy left that and like you say, maybe Frank tried to do too much too soon. Uh, but there was so yeah, that team was just was just 
yeah, decimated after that. It was. Um, it was. Yeah. 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 To, uh, Dan says here, which player would you say you tried to model your game on? Okay, so when I was growing up, Eddie Gray was a terrific left winger for Leeds United. Yes. And I just used to love the ease that he used to go past players. And he had this way of taking you one way, dropping his shoulder and going past you. So I, I mastered that technique very quickly, although I was right footed. I mastered the technique mm. very, very quickly. And so I would say that, you know, because of his, his style of play, I think I modeled my game initially on him. But like I said, the influence of Keith Weller, was 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 you know fantastic to me and yeah. really helpful and then i've got to say when i went to berry um i learned so much from leighton james again yeah again yeah. a burnley link as well burnley and berry. <laughs> yeah i learned yeah. so much from leighton james because yeah. leighton wasn't you know about that point you know he wasn't blessed with the greatest amount of pace mm. but what he did was he played with a lot of intelligence and there were times where he played the ball in exceptionally early you know, with the, without even beating the player. And I learned a lot about that. And I think that actually uh, gave me longevity in the game because I figured out very quickly about space and how to use space. So yeah. there's been a number of influences of wide players, but I think those are the three that stand out to me. Yeah, good good names, good names as well. Uh, Scott says here, what manager would you say had the most influence over yourself, Winston, as a player? Oh, without a doubt, Jimmy Bloomfield. Mm. Jimmy Bluefield, you know, the, the manager, the coach that gives you your debut, you never forget that. You know, you're filled with so much joy and passion. It was my hometown club as well. I yeah. felt, you know, I felt like a, like Superman. I really did. And um, so, you know, I, I, I was I was going for, in, you know, uh, England trials and things like that. He really pushed hard, for, not just for me, but for, for some of the younger players. Yeah. His way of coaching, you know, sometimes tough love what knew how to put his arm around you and and talk to you in a way that you could understand it so jimmy bloomfield was definitely uh a, a massive influence for me and then yeah. down the line you know I, I have to say frank casper um i i have to give him a big shout out because what a coach i really enjoyed his coaching sessions and um you know obviously uh, you know i was uh, at the same club as him on two occasions so I kind of understood what Frank was about. So I, I really enjoyed him, you know, the way he coached. And he was an attacking player as well. So I think yeah. he understood, you know, the way that I played. Yeah. And Anthony here. Um, hi, Chris. Question to Winston. What is your most memorable game in your career and why? Please say it was when you beat Arsenal at some point, because Anthony's an Arsenal fan. I'd love you to say right. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Anthony. Great question. Um, okay. So I've, I've really got two. Uh, making, your, ma making your debut, there's nothing like it. Because no. you, you, you have no reference because it, there's nothing like making your debut. Um, it, it beats everything that, that's gone before. So that definitely was a, a key moment, making my debut for Leicester City against Stoke City away um, and setting up the goal for Frank Worthington for him to score against Peter Shilton. And mm. it was just a dream come true in so many ways because my job was a, as to assist. And then the, 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 the next game, I would say, is uh, scoring for uh, Leicester against Liverpool at, at the cop end against mm. Ray Clements. Um, that was that was pretty special because not many Imagine, people can yes. say they've done that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I I I, I can completely understand that. Just a couple more. Um, again, one from Dan here. Was there any youth players you played with that had the ability to make it pro but never made the cut? Oh gosh, we're talking all day about that because yeah. you know you do see players come and go, but. What people sometimes don't understand about the game, it's not just about ability. You know, it's there's this saying that, you know, it's 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. Well, that perspiration comes not just on play, playing in the, in the games, but it's how you apply yourself in training. It's, it's preparation, you know, and proper preparation prevents poor performance is a thing that I was always told. Yeah, oh, God, I, yeah. I kind of said that without, without uh, tripping up. But, yeah, yeah. I mean... It, it is it is a real tragedy how many players don't make it but have the fundamental abilities to be able to to make it but yeah it's 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 a di there's, there's different factors and components and um and, and and unfortunately i think the dropout rate's higher now than it, than it was even when i was playing and that's mm. that's a real tragedy you know because yes. we do have some lost talent out there yes um 
Spencer has here now put your feet up and get comfy. Um Winston, what do you think of today's Leicester side? I mean, oh, I don't know how much you you you've you have you have seen and, and followed uh, Leicester. Oh, listen, um, I'm I'm Leicester till I die. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, I, I was privileged to be at the Everton game uh when we picked up the we got the championship. It was oh, wow. you know, yeah. it was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um I I think the Leicester side would have been far uh far further up the league up the, you know at the table now than mm. if they had to got those injuries because oh, definitely, they yeah. they had them they have the making at the beginning of the season of i think a top four side there's no yeah. two ways about it and uh you, you know you just look you just look at the spine of the team uh if, you know if all the players were fit mm. definitely a top four team potentially in the waiting yeah. Um, you know, and 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 that's the best compliment I can give, really, for 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 um, for for this season. Um, yeah. But again, you know, it, it's 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 it, they've done so well in the, in obviously in Europe. Um, I think it's a very very good team. I think at some point they're definitely going to have to uh, get somebody of the quality and goal scoring prowess of Jamie Vardy. I think to con mm. you know to to maintain that continuity. But I think. They've got some really good defenders. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the boy uh, Tillemans is going to be leaving, mm. um, which is a real shame. But I think I think they can cover. I think they can, mm -hmm. I think they'll have cover for that because you know you look at some of the players that they've got that have come through. Um, I think they, they they'll have more than enough, and they're mm. a very young team, the youngest in the league, if I'm not mistaken. In the in the, uh, it's the one of them certainly, league. yes, I think, yeah, yeah. So so the future is looking incredibly bright, and. Um, I'm proud to say I'm a I'm a Leicester lad when I yeah. when I see the way they play as well because they play with a a panache that I really like. It is, and like you say, we've had two amazing. Well, <laughs> the seasons we've had since you know we got taken over have just been unbelievable. You know right. the, the 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 two thousand well the Premier League trophy, then yeah. the FA Cup, then the Community Shield. We've got right. to go and win something in Europe. There's nothing right. left. <laughs> nothing left in this country to win. Right. We've yeah. done everything. And, yeah. And and, I, and you, yeah. It's amazing when you think you know. Again, you know we're of a generation where you know Le Le Leicester was a you know it was a kind of a middle of the table you know mm -hmm. before I joined and so on and, and you know you, you always you always thought they were just one of those potentially yo-yo teams but never yeah. ever going to do anything at, at the top echelons and look at mm -hmm. look at us now look at the conversation we're having yes. it's extraordinary mm -hmm. I was at the stadium for the Jack Wallace reunion there uh, it's yeah, about the third yeah. time I've been to the stadium and it's it's mm -hmm. just breathtaking as mm. to how much of a machine now the Leicester City operation is. It so is. respect and credit to not just the players, but the owners. Yeah. Uh, even far back as Martin O'Neill, really, because, you know, Martin got the team playing with that style and winning things. And uh, mm. so it, it's been a journey for Leicester, and I've, I've, I've watched every minute of it. Yeah. Oh, it, it's it's been unbelievable. I'll clip that bit where you said you left it till I die. That would make a good jingle for me. There you go. Um, there you go. I should trademark says, it. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a check, as they say. Uh, uh, last two questions here. Um, first of all, Scott, which was there a club which you did not like playing against? Wow. Uh, okay. Um, I I always always had a problem playing up in the northeast. I must admit. Um, I remember I played against Newcastle United once, and uh, it was it was a tribalism like I'd never seen before. Um, you, you know, incredible tribalism. That was always a challenge in the northeast. Yeah. Uh, I remember as a kid, uh, before I made my debut for Leicester City, I, I went to Millwall, the old den. Never Ooh, forget yeah. that. Yeah. Never forget that um, because that was something different I'd never seen before. They that was pure mm. hatred. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, still and, is. It still is, to be honest with you. Right, and um, you know, so that kind of fills me with fills me with a little bit of fear. I remember, you know, when it, 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 mm. back in the day, and uh, so yeah, the, the thought of going back to Millwall again is kind of whoa, you know. So yeah, th those 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 two areas, Millwall definitely, and and the yeah. northeast. They were very uncompromising, very hardcore up there, you know. So, mm. uh, 
Yeah, always. I remember we played Millwall in uh, one of the cup competitions, and uh, Ben Chilwell had just broken through, and he literally right. admitted he was too scared to go and take a throw in. Wow. Because it was near to the Millwall fans, and yeah. the buses get pelted. Oh, it is. It's. I say it hasn't improved there at all. And I yeah. guess with the last question here, um, Millwall would fall into that bracket. Was there any club under no circumstances that would you have not signed for? Oh, would you have signed for? Would you have not signed for? No, wow. sorry, no, under no, no circumstance. Sorry, was there any club that under no circumstances would you would have, have not, not signed, signed for? for? Yes. You know what? I, I, it, that's very difficult to say. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it was my job. Mm. So um, it's all about timing and that, you know, that sort of situation. I honestly think that if if, if Blackburn would have came for me when I was at Burnley, there's no way I'd have gone to Blackburn Rovers <laughs> yes. at the yeah. time, right? At the yeah. time. Um if, when I was at Leicester, there was no way I'd have gone to Nottingham Forest at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, you know, moving on, you know, your job is your job. And um, yeah. I was yeah, a professional is. footballer. So you've got to take the emotion out of it. Mm. And you've got to think about your family when you're making these decisions. Yes. And your security, yeah. because you've only, you've got a, a certain shelf life. So, um, you know, I've got to, I've got to think logically in terms of a, a professional way. And uh, I, I, I push come to shove I, I would have played for anybody just to play the game because i love the game so much of course, of course. You know? and i like i said uh, earlier i lived in burnley for sort of 25 odd years and during that time i did actually get a job at blackburn rovers football club oh wow <laughs> it was the, it was in the sales department and of course as part of working for them you got two free season tickets right so i used to take my sons uh, to watch it and we have we got we have the shirts because you you've got to have the shirts when you you know when you're watching a team and right. we used to stop on the motorway on the, the M65 on the way home get right. out the get out the Blackburn shirts and everything right. put normal clothes on before right. we could get drive into Burnley and feel safe. It's incredible, yeah. yeah. I yeah, I know a few of the Blackburn lads and uh, and we played against Blackburn a couple of times when I was at Burnley and the rivalry there is 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 incredible, intense. Yeah. It's yeah, you, you know, but it's 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 amazing. You know, you go back to that community thing, and you know the loyalty that these fans show mm -hmm. to the to the to the teams. I, you know, I, I I've always been engaged with the fans. I've always respected the fans for you know even you know for the for the some of the rubbish they put up with at times. I kind of say, <laughs> um, you That's know, true. but the loyalty they show as well. You know, and, and yeah. they 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 have a right right to complain and. And, and 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 moan about it and so on they mm. have that right absolutely but sometimes yeah. you know you've got to factor in a few things where, especially when it comes to the players a player doesn't want to go out there and fail he wants to go out there and and be successful you know yes. and there's yes. certain factors that can stop that player from doing that at times and sometimes it's not always um, on the field situations mm. you know um we, we yeah. mentioned earlier that you know you're over there in, in florida what does the future hold for winston white well, I'm still involved in the game. I'm running a, lot, a number of different tournaments, um, soccer tournaments. Um, I have my own agency, so I'm always looking for players. Uh, I still have, you know, connections with uh, some of the teams I play for and also some of the teams I didn't play for. So um, I, I'm, I'm always making uh, trips to the UK, uh, bringing players over. I've got some events happening in the UK next year as well as here. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still involved in, in the game. I'm the president of the sports council here. Mm. Um, yeah. So, mm. you know, I, I, I'm I, not just Lester till I die. I'm sporty guy till I die. You know, yes. I, uh, yeah. I continue, I continue to stay involved in the game in every which way possible. But my, my head is with helping young players, young people that have hopes and aspirations. I mm. never forget people gave me the opportunity, gave me the hope, the dreams, um, if you don't have kids that have dreams and hopes, then you have a very broken society. So I, I will do the very best I can uh, through sport to give kids those those hopes and aspirations. Very, very good words. Spencer just says here, uh, what a top guest. Thanks for your time, Winston and Chris. Great show. 
Uh, thank you, Spencer. And Scott says here, thank you so much, Winston, for your time, not only as a footballer, but especially tonight as well. I'll always appreciate being able to listen to ex-football players share their experiences. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Appreciate you, man. No, I really appreciate you coming on. Like you said, since since we discovered you on social media, you've been, you've been inundated. But yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for sparing the time to come on here. It's been great. And I know I say I always appreciate the fact, you know, that you're giving up your time to talk to the players and the fans, or not the players, the fans and um, that, that remember you. So I appreciate your time, Winston. Enjoy Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll try. I mean, I'm down in Poland. It's, it's, it's lovely here, but it's not Florida, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. All the best to you and your family. Uh, take care and stay safe. Thanks very much. That was Chris. All the best to you. Up the Clarets, up the Leicester. <laughs> I was just going to say Burnley are winning one 0 by the way. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I just saw the I just saw the score. That's why I said it. Ah, yeah. right. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. let's hope this day up. Thanks Cheers, very much, Chris. Vincent. All, All the best, mate. Take bye, care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Oh, what a lovely, what a lovely, lovely guy. Winston White there, ex, well, yes, he was Burnley as well. We have to share him, but he was ex Leicester. Uh, I'm going to be back at nine. We're going to have a midweek semi, uh, if, <laughs> who uh, misses. We've got, of course, all the European football semi final start next week. We've got two teams in the Champions League, one team in the Europa League, and little old Leicester in the Europa Conference League. Can we win the inaugural cup? It would be good. Catch me back here, same time, uh, same channel, nine o'clock. And uh, I say many, many thanks to Winston again. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you later on. Thanks for watching Leicester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.